16 months now, I have been trying and trying to finish my dream home here in Bali, Indonesia. But one of my worst nightmares has just come true. Not only that, I made yet again another multi-thousand dollar mistake that's coming back to haunt me. And I just made the call yesterday to call off our family Christmas vacation here to the villa. And did I mention I was supposed to be moved in here four months ago? Yeah, these are the highs and lows of building your dream home here in the jungle. For the first time in almost five months, I'm gonna go see the Lost Villa. I've been kept up to date with everything that's going on. The team's been sending me photos and videos, but there's nothing like seeing it in person. And Koda hasn't gone for a run there in a long time. So we're gonna go explore our home that's finally taking shape. Let's go. But before I can show you what's going on right now, we have to rewind about six months. The moment these bare-bone concrete foundations were up, it was time to start making this place a little more cozy. And a big part of that warmth is our beautiful hardwood flooring. Now to create this flooring takes a lot of work. Step one, you're gonna need to level your concrete because if it's not 100% leveled, you're gonna have crooked floors and it won't be long till you have damaged hardwood flooring. Now step two is to build a subfloor in the outdoor areas. The team started chipping away at our concrete foundation to put in these raised little pieces. And these pieces would hold the ironwood planks above the concrete foundation to allow water and airflow to pass under the walkways. This would prevent moisture from getting trapped and allow allow for drainage during the heavy, heavy rains here in Bali. Now after our hardwood flooring was dropped off, step three was to trim and shape the wood planks so that they fit exactly into place. Step four was to apply wood glue to the wooden planks and this would hold them into place before the final step, nails, nails, and more nails. The next exciting thing that's been going on is this. These are my Aztec temple stairs. We added some wooden forms and rebar reinforcements. From there, concrete was poured and voila, a few days of hardening later, the foundations were set and soon these stairs will be given a decorative textured terrazzo so that nobody's slipping in the rain. Now, the roof line is going to face some of Bali's harshest conditions, so we needed a solution. We created these metal skirts on the edges of the roof to avoid moisture getting in. And for the skylights, we had these beautiful steel reinforcements made. The team grinded, soldered, and shaped these inserts until they fit in like a puzzle piece. And we did the exact same thing for the window sills, giving them a super strong frame that can either be sat in or filled with awesome decorations. It's a really premium touch. Next up, the pool became a pool. What was previously a massive concrete hole became beautiful with these decorative stones called greenstone. Greenstone comes in multiple different colors, but we went for the Sukabumi color. Hundreds and hundreds of these stones were sent to site and carefully cut. From there, the contractor followed the exact pattern that was set out by Stefan and the single art team. Also, the pool became a serious challenge for us. You see, I hired the wrong lighting designers. Yet again, wasted money. But even worse than the lost money is the fact that we almost installed basic lighting inside the pool. But luckily, Joey with Alditra Lighting caught it just before installation, and he proposed to us a much more modern RGB strip that runs along the entire pool. Yes, the Las Villa pool can now go green, blue, red, or any other color you want. Super grateful Joey caught that before it was too late. Once the stones were inserted in place, they they were grinded, sanded, and made uniform. A lot more details come into the pool soon. Our steel beams that hold up the roof line got some weatherproofing and a new black coat. The iconic rock walls that encircle this property were finally completed. This took a lot of man hours. Each stone had to be shaped around the given space and it's a super manually intensive process. Just like the floors are a big part of the home, an area that gets less attention but covers just as much area is the ceiling. So we got to work on our custom groundbreaking and cost-effective way to make a ceiling, or so I thought. Trust me, this was until I would soon realize this was one of the biggest mistakes I made on Lost Villa. I'll tell you more about that in a bit. Panel by panel, we covered the outside with a black decorative plywood and the inside with a white one. The next up was our water filtration system. One of the awesome things about Lost Villa is that you're gonna have clean drinking water straight from the faucets, which is pretty much unheard of in Bali. And while this is far from the only things happening in the last six months, 
One of the big ones was the installation of our lights and being connected to PLN, which is the local electricity company here in Bali, Indonesia. Oh my gosh. I am entering into a jungle. What a feeling. Let's go explore. Look at this. They got the decorative ceiling wood on. Uh, good to see you. Yeah, yeah, Long time no see. Yeah. Good, to see, good to see you. I'm doing good. So it's so nice to be back. This is our first time seeing it. This is unbelievable. All of this right here, guys. This is new. This is our beautiful Ulin hardwood flooring. All this is coming from this gentleman right here, Guillaume with Cal Timber. They are the suppliers of all of our Ulin flooring, all of our Ulin that we're using in the home. So this is the interior. What do you call this one? Smooth? Smooth, yeah. Smooth and then, flooring. And then on the outside, what do we have here? So here is the rustic natural texture of the wood. Either one of these woods can be used outside. You've got smooth profile and you've got what we're standing on, what we've used for the outdoor, which is the more natural rough texture. And this is just purely preference. You can go either way. Does one age a little better than the other for outdoor use? They both age in a different way. The rustic tends to stay darker, yeah. while the smooth tends to turn a little bit more grayish. So Guillaume was just telling me, this is kind of like, almost all three colors that we're gonna see this is like the life cycle it starts light like this and as time goes on as exposure to Sun goes on it tans and then it goes to something, something like, like this that range, yes. and the finish line is something more like this exactly to a much darker reddish color the final room is gonna look like a glossy version of this so apparently we have a treated version to go see let's go check out <laughs> I had no idea <laughs> I don't live here apparently. So back to the floors. After careful installation, you're left with planks that are different colors and uneven surfaces. So we sent in this guy. After a few passes of the sander, a coat of final finishing oils were applied, and this is the final result you will see in the Lost Villa interior. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. So this is the treated area here. Yeah. This is the final color you think then? Oh yeah. This is awesome. This is the final I love this color. It's really too flat like that. So the, the unique thing about Cal Timber's wood is that it's all recycled. So not a single tree had to be cut down to create this dream home. It all came from repurposed old roads, bridges, boats that were basically put out of commission and out of use. They were stripped down for their useful wood and then brought into Cal Timber where they resurfaced it. They brought it to this beautiful state and now it's in the Lost Villa. Koda's leaving his imprints on it. Yeah, there's a lot happening on site right now, but there's also a lot happening next door. Hey, Pakmade, hey, hey. how are you? Hi. <laughs> so good to see you. Pakmade is now completing door number four. You see, each door is double-sided, has intricate carving on every square centimeter. And because this process is a total labor of love, it's about one month per double-sided door. So this is the, the final product, finished? Yeah. <laughs> Wow. I actually discovered this late game because of Guillaume. I was asking Guillaume what is ultimately going to be a better wood to use for the doors that's relatively affordable, strong, gonna hold up against termites, and also able to be carved by Pakmade. I only ever hear people talk about Bankirai and Teak, but it turns out there was a third wood that typically most people don't look at, and Guillaume told me to use a wood called Marbao. So very grateful to Guillaume. Because we were burning, we were scorching it, it really didn't matter what wood we used as long as it was solid. And so this is the doors. Unreal. It's got the this beautiful charcoal-like matte finish and all of the love that Pak Made has put into it. Thank you, Pak. Mm -hmm. This is this is amazing. But when I think about some of the proudest parts of this home, I think about the tree we brought inside of it. Basically the spirit of Las Villa. I think about the stone wall that's soon to be hung in the living room. And I think about this piece. It's a beautiful piece of art that I got to make with my neighbor. And just like the rest of the uncompromising pieces, this door represents the love and energy that's going into building my dream home. So these guys are gonna be for our driveway. Originally, we had planned to go with the render that you see here, kind of this squared sort of grass walkway. But the reality is my friend has opened a resort and what happens is when you have grass in particular areas, the grass can die. And with an area where you're gonna ride a motorbike, a car over, that's gonna be really hard on the grass. And in the end, Stefan, the designer with single art, basically said it was too safe. So he's gone back to the drawing board to make things more intricate, more detailed, and we have a new design. What is the design? 
Well, I'm glad you asked. This is kind of the look of the design we're going with. The rest, you'll just have to wait and see. Okay, here we go, adventure time. Now, up to the rooftop is the crown jewel of Las Villa, and a lot of progress has been made on its design. Stefan, Denisa, and the single art team have been dreaming how we can bring an organic finish to this otherwise modern home to make use of some of the local build materials like bamboo. And here were the two final renders, both epic designs and both one of a kind. But after going to TikTok to ask my wise counsel of home decorators, the consensus was overwhelmingly in favor of the roofed version. Both Stefan and I agree. This is going to become the treehouse of Lost Villa. And while it's still a rough render, I can't wait to show you what's coming. We're basically finding its shape and finding its placement right now, but we have an issue. The way it was explained to our architect, it was one linear tree trunk, but we've actually got five different arms all kind of spreading out. And now we have to figure out how do we preserve the tree? Because as much as we could cut a couple limbs and they're not the biggest part of the tree, that's kind of going a little bit against what we're trying to do here. The reason this tree is in the middle of the home is because we're building around it. And so ultimately we'll find a way to reshape the platform. We might give up a little bit of space on the deck, but I think it'll make it more interesting, more unique standing up on the deck where there's little limbs growing out of it. This is our sunset view. Like this is gonna be a beautiful oasis where we're gonna just basically be cut off from the entire world and it's just gonna be our little paradise and it's gonna be so nice and I'm so excited. Now, as you're starting to see, there's been love put into every square meter of this home and the yard is no exception. Over the last six months, there's been some steady and epic progress towards some of our key features. For one, we planted a lot of new plants, bringing together a jungle wall that will soon create a ton of intimacy inside the property. We began digging the stream that would soon become our man-made river and waterfall fixture. And we carefully installed a rubber membrane to keep the rainwater in the river so we could continue pump it from the bottom pond all the way back up to the top waterfall. Yeah, this massive hole is going to be our pond and it's also gonna be home to a ton of fish. And just floating on top of that, a cold plunge and a beautiful tropical spa in the same style and aesthetic as the treehouse. Nicely done, Stefan. I always like dreamed of building out one of those homes and I knew it needed to have a treehouse. It needed to have a river. And uh, so all these little elements that I've just come to, to love and dream of, they're here and they're being built and we're just a few months away from uh, moving in so seriously is panning out to be even better than we be like first visualized in the beginning mm -hmm. it's just gotten a hundred percent better yeah. and like it's really exciting because all the people that we've been working with have been making the process so much easier mm -hmm. than we could have ever imagined now Las Villa has been going smoothly but not perfectly for one these ceiling panels would go on to be one of my biggest mistakes and literally just yesterday we had to move back and rip out our entire ceiling panels. But I'll tell you more about that in the next video. Secondly, my design changes have already pushed back my completion date a full six months, if not more. And I just made the call yesterday to call off our family Christmas vacation here to the villa. I don't really wanna host my family in a construction site. It's kind of a bummer, but by far the worst and the most unexpected thing about this build is what happened next door. When I got this land, I was a bit naive. I thought I'd have a few years before neighbors would build nearby. Or at the very least, I thought what my neighbors would go on to build would have zero impact on the privacy of my home. Well, I assumed wrong. And that leads to people building behemoth structures into the skies. And my next door neighbor is basically the eye of Sauron. Over the last few months, I've watched in horror as not just one, but two neighbors build up and up and up. As you know, Las Villa is a home of privacy, a place where you get away from the chaos of Chang it's an escape. And so the last thing I wanted was somebody to be able to look into my yard. When I saw how tall this thing got, I kind of just came to terms with the fact there might be nothing we can do about it. But that was until I made a fateful call and discovered there was still hope. But before we jump into that, something wildly exciting has just arrived from Surabaya. Today is an exciting day because just outside of the Las Villa is the first delivery of our stone. Inside that truck is a flatbed full of marble, travertines, and all sorts of other stones that are going to make this villa the special place that it is. This design is one of a kind. You see, one of the standout things of Las Villa is all the natural materials we're using. And with this delivery begins the next stage of Las Villa, the stone era. If there's one thing we've seen throughout all these videos, it's just how strong these men are. They've hoisted steel beams, they've hoisted that Bodhi tree right behind us, and now they're about to carry a slab of stone, and there ain't no pulley systems to help them here. Their shoulders 
must be so strong carrying that bamboo on there. There's no give. Kind of reminds me of when I climbed Mount Kawijen. These Indonesian men would basically carry rocks all the way distributed across their back and just barely distributed across their shoulders and their neck. They actually grew calluses. It was so tough, such grueling conditions. So this is one of four. There are four pieces that will be put side by side to make it look like one continuous rock wall, making the home look like it's a cliffside. There are three rooms in total that will be making use of that design. The living room, the cinema, and one of the guest rooms. So I came to the site today thinking we would just be seeing the arrival of MM Gallery shipment, but it turns out we're also here the same day Anton's team's here to make some serious progress on our lazy river. Today they're bringing in all this limestone and they're gonna turn it into a beautiful natural flowing fountain of youth. One thing I've learned about construction in Bali is that not all projects are made equally and not all projects take the same amount of time. My next door neighbor, they built a white concrete box and they got that thing up in maybe less than a year. In nine to 12 months, they were fully opened, ready for business. This has now gone over a year and we still don't have doors on. We still don't have aluminum sliders. A lot of that has been my own fault. As you guys know, I completely changed the interior design. We went from something like this to this. I set my entire team back several months. I wouldn't change that. There's a reason why Bali is springing up with white concrete buildings. Simply put, they're cheap and easy to make. But I'm so glad we're not going the cookie cutter approach. The way this home's designed is one of one. There's nobody else like it. And I am so proud of that. From the beginning of the construction project, it wasn't a game of ROIs. It wasn't a budget spreadsheet trying to maximize profit, minimize costs. It was figuring out how do we give this home so much soul that the moment somebody steps in here, they say, I've never seen anything like it. I can already feel that this is a special home. And truthfully, there's been moments where I've been like, what if we just went simple? I've taken on a lot right now between YouTube, Lost Villa, Lost Creator Academy. But I gotta say, this has been a project that has fueled me so much. And even though it's probably an hour or two worth of work every single day, I'm so grateful that I've invested my time in this project. I feel like I've really found a solid roster of contractors, suppliers, people that make life easy to work with. And I can't wait to keep that momentum going into the next project. So this is gonna be a process. We're still on the first piece of giant stone that has to be cut into the shape of the room. So they actually send it a little longer, a little bigger than it needs to be, and they cut it on spot to make sure it fits precisely into the room. Probably gonna be a whole day just to do one room, actually. These strong men have managed to install the first slab, which is one problem. There's four more rooms that need them, and there's probably two to four slabs per room. So I'd say give it a few days, it's all gonna be done, and I'll give you an update. I actually leave tomorrow to celebrate my three year anniversary. I'm gonna go celebrate with Ruby down in Uluwatu. So kind of bummed I can't be here, but I guess I'll come back to the villa looking like this. Wow, I am back after a much needed three days off and I'm back to something insane. Look at this. In front of me here is all the beautiful stone that is about to bring this villa to life. Look at this. That right there is one of our stone vanities, a big sink completely carved out of a boulder. These guys are continuing to blow me away with the riverbed. It's honestly such an exciting time here at the Lost Villa. There's been lulls. There's been moments where we've had a few delays. I changed designs. It took us a little bit of regrouping, but now it's full steam ahead. With that said, oh my gosh, look at the beauty of this stone. MM Gallery has delivered the finest stones from all over the world. Some are from Turkey, some are from Italy. This beautiful marble here, this is gonna be for the master bathroom. This is going to be for one of the spare bathrooms. It's like a beautiful travertine. This right here is a nice dark gray. This has gotta be the platinum travertine, I believe it was called. Wow. It's honestly surreal, guys. To see these materials in person, it just becomes that much more real. This right here is actually a fossil. You can see here, this is all real, right from nature. You can see all these little shells inside of it. And this right here, the start of our rock wall. It's coming together so beautifully. So check this out. You'll see they've actually intentionally carved it to a line in these areas. Once it's all properly set and sanded, it'll look like one solid piece of rock covering the entire wall. 
I've done a lot of research on stone. There's very few people in all of Indonesia that can pull this off. This is a very difficult process. It takes a dozen men or so just to carve all these pieces, then to transport, to carefully position it on this wall, and then to finalize the process, which you'll have to wait a little longer to see. It's a work of art. It really is. So MM Gallery has dropped the first truck, but it's not the last. There's another full truck coming with sinks, a very specialty piece that's going in the powder room, which is like the main guest bathroom, and a ton more tile and finishes and stone walls. So excited. This is one of the, honestly, one of the most wow moments of the entire build process is seeing the stone come. It's gonna bring this place to life. All right guys, meet Kevin. The newest addition to the LeBlanc family. Ruby surprised me for our three year anniversary. And today we're back to visit the Lost Villa, not just to see where the stone's at, but also to give Kevin his first tour of his soon to be home. Saul's first time back at the Lost Villa in a while. Wow, it's crazy, yeah. happy yeah, to be here. Yeah, your room? Show me my room, bro. Yeah, wow. Look at all this guys, they're pulling this massive boulder into place. That's the, uh, the tube park. We're gonna have like a little river rapid, like no Disneyland. Way. Nice work, Salt. So that right there is how you get a massive stone all the way across the riverbed without having to roll it, because this thing is a lot heavier than you guys would think. <laughs> Nicely done. The river was coming along, thanks to these superheroes. But we needed a new kind of hero to save my home from the all-seeing eye. We needed Anton. Look who it is. One of my favorite people in the world. <laughs> hey, Anton. How are you? How are you? It's changed a little bit since you've last been here, I think. There's a lot of great changes, but there's also a couple that have not been ideal. Uh, we got some neighbors now. Yeah, new neighbors, new view, something yeah. new to block. Yeah. Our neighbors are doing what most people do in Changu nowadays. Land values have gone up. So how do you make use of smaller and smaller land plots? You build up. To the back, we've got two very tall ceiling floors. So we're gonna definitely need Bali's green lush earth to start basically sprouting uh, trees into the skies to help us build in that privacy. And uh, yeah, Anton's the man to help with that. And today, there's a very exciting thing that arrived at the front door. So where's the crane? No crane today. <laughs> no crane today? Oh, manual today. <laughs> okay. Manual Sunday. That last tree was easy work. Yeah, so we're gonna lift the tree, move it into this side area here. The truck will go out, okay. the tree will go in. Time to say goodbye to your neighbors. More instant trees on the way. In a western country, this root ball would be 500 kilos. Because we're in the tropics and we don't have the stress, we're able to take a smaller root ball and still move a big tree with no stress. How many kilos do you think that root ball is? This is probably 150 kilos. Wow, okay, yeah. So moving in North America would take I mean, cranes, right? You would need... Yeah, you, you wouldn't do it, humans. You do, you, it'd have to be cranes to move this in a Western country. Yeah, wow. It does not take away from how ridiculously hard this is. These guys, they're hustling. Oh my gosh, wow. Everyone all right? As you can see, so we've got our, our white house neighbor to the backside, Anton. I mean, this one's probably the easier hide, right? So this one's two stories. So we've already started off with some pandans. The guys have been bringing the massive, probably 200 kilogram pandan in. Oh, more. More? Huge pandan, yeah. instant blockage. Instantly, I'm feeling so much better. I'm sure you guys can appreciate that, you know, so much love and energy has gone into building this home. And over the last few days, even more reinforcements have been brought in by Anton's team. We've got the banyan, we've got these beautiful fan palms, and that's just the starting point. One rainy season away, and it's gonna be a goodbye to Soranzai. 
Just a friendly reminder that not all heroes wear capes. Sometimes they wear flip-flops. Let's get lost again in the next one.